oh, you guys, I was brilliant. I can't even believe how brilliant I was. And you didn't hear any of it. It was my best work. Oh, and I had it on mute. Um, Laura, you were the one who alerted me that there was no sound. Hopefully, now there is. I hope, I hope. Um, I might have to go in and edit this at the beginning before I post it on our YouTube channel, right? Can you hear me now? Give me a thumbs up if you can. Um, and that would be great. It looks like everything's working, I hope. Yay, all right, good. So welcome to Sunday Night Live, where we explore the principles that allow us to thrive in change. And I'm talking about the change we wanted and the change we don't. You are in the right place if you love change or hate change. I'm here to tell you you're going to go through change. And I'm really glad that you're choosing to lean into that, that you're not just allowing the changes in your life to sweep you off, but that you're being intentional in the midst of them. So thank you. Thank you for doing that work because it makes our world a better place. The people you impact every day are better because of the work you do here. Thank you for doing it. Tonight, we are going to be exploring the Thrive Principle, hashtag bring the honor. Bring the honor says that no matter what kind of a situation we are in or that we are going through, it is a better situation because we are in the midst of it, because we bring honor. I am a vessel of honor. I am a person of honor and integrity. You are a person of honor and integrity and value. And when you show up in a situation as your best self, as that person of honor, it up levels everything. It changes outcomes. And that is particularly applicable in the principle that we're going to explore today from the seven habits of highly effective people. All right. Shout out to Thumb Roast Coffee. Woo! <laughs> Thumb Roast Coffee just brought back their traditional Christmas blend and it is delicious. So if you are looking for something that's just going to remind you of the holidays, check out the Thumb Roast Coffee Christmas Blend. It's great. It makes a wonderful seasonal gift for somebody. It's a great hostess gift. If you order a couple of, or host gift, uh, if you order a couple of bags and have them on hand, hand, put a nice bow on them and take them when you go to your, your family's house for dinner or when you're invited out to a party, something that they can look forward to the next day as they recuperate and clean up, right? It's a beautiful thing. And what's even better is when you go to thumbroastcoffee.com, you can put in the coupon code THRIVE, T-H-R-I-V-E, and you will get 15% off the bottom line. Now is the time to stock up. You will not be sorry. And a shout out to Thumbroast Coffee and the staff there. They are people who are committed to growth, just like you are. And I think that's pretty cool that they are investing their time, their effort into growing their people and they're helping us do the same here on Sunday Night Live. So it's pretty cool. Make sure you check them out at thumbroastcoffee.com. Yay. All right. So, um, oh, hi, Carol. I'm glad you're here. So thanks for jumping in. Thanks for being faithful to your growth, uh, for being consistent in season, out of season. Ah, Philip's here. Hi, Philip. Philip, I, I have to show you. I am not drinking my thumb roast coffee tonight. I am drinking water because I don't need any more caffeine today. Sadly, I would prefer to have thumb roast coffee, <laughs> but I've got water. And it's good for me. All right, so let's get started. We've been going through a series on Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And tonight we're going to explore habit number four, and it is think, win, win. I want you to think back to every game you ever played when you were growing up. What was your goal? <laughs> your goal was to win. I don't care if I was playing Candyland. If anybody has seen me at a bridal shower, I can get pretty competitive over some of those party games. Not necessarily proud, <laughs> but, but <coughs> excuse me, but I can from time to time really get into competitive mode. And competitive mode means win-lose. Somebody is going to win and I want it to be me. And everybody else is a loser. You know what I'm talking about. But that is such a small part of life, 
a game where you're competing to win a football game. And yet we often take that principle, that win-lose that we dug in so hard on to, to win that Scrabble game or to win that high school football game. Ah, Philip plays to win. Yes. And that is a good thing. It really is because there are times when that applies. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. We often apply that thinking to areas where it does not apply at all. And I want to talk about those. When Stephen Covey talks about the uh, fourth habit, win-win, he's got a lot. There's a lot in that chapter in that book. If you've got a copy of the seven habits of highly effective people, dig into it. It's, it's fantastic, but it's nothing that I can cover in half an hour. But I am going to focus in on a couple of pieces of this idea, this habit of thinking win-win, because I've seen them show up in strange places. I've seen people think win-lose in places where it doesn't apply. It's not like you're on the football field, Philip, trying to get that ball over the line so you can win a game. Some people apply this thinking of there's going to be a winner and there's going to be a loser. Some people, many people apply that to their relationships. Somebody wins and somebody loses. Many of them apply that to their businesses. I want to win and that means everybody else loses. Some people apply that idea of winning and losing in all the wrong ways. And it can be not just painful, but it can be detrimental. And I believe that it stops us from having the, the full life that God created us to have because, well, let's jump in. <laughs> let's jump in. So this idea of think win-win, its root begins with our character. And that's why tonight's uh, Thrive Principle is hashtag bring the honor because the habit think win-win starts with our character. Think win-win means that I can get what I need and what I want and that what helps me. And you can also get what you want and what you need. Think win-win says that I am not just going to seek to make sure that I get everything I need. I am also going to be concerned with whether you get what you need. Does that make sense? Ah, Jerry Holland Ministries just pop, popped on. Helping others helps you. Yes. When we are helping others, it helps us. We both win. Each party gets something out of it. And so our character matters. Our character matters. We have to bring the honor. And this is what Stephen Covey says about it. He says that um, our the think win-win character has three aspects of it. The first one is this, the first one, and you might want to write these down. Uh, these are good to think on over the, the next week as you wake up in the morning with your thumb roast coffee and are having your quiet time, as I do. These are some good things to think about. Uh, Philip's chiming in, that's right. Yeah, not everything is win-lose, right, Philip? All right, so the first thing is about our character, the first aspect of our character that allows us to think win-win is integrity. And he defines it this way, and, and I really like this. Covey says the value we place on ourselves is what integrity is. Integrity is the value I place on myself. This is how we say it here on Sunday Night Live. Bring the honor. I'm a vessel of honor. I'm a person of honor. When I believe that about myself, I bring that honor wherever I go. That's my integrity. That's the kind of person I am. What we, how we see ourselves, the value we put on ourselves allows us to be people of integrity. If that doesn't quite sync with you, that's okay. I want you to percolate on that because I think you'll find as you start allowing yourself to consider that, that it really is true. My integrity, my level of integrity is directly linked with the value that I place on myself. If we are going to think win-win in a situation, we have to understand that we are people 
of value, right? If, if I'm going to win, I, I need to be a person of value. And if I'm going to help somebody else win, I need to have enough value within me to do it. Does that make sense? All right. The second aspect of our character that he says is important is our maturity. So we have to have integrity to think win-win, and we have to have maturity. And this is how he defines maturity in the book, and it's not original to him. But we'll, we'll use this because I like it <laughs> and because it's true. But I also think it's, it's appropriate here. So this is how he describes maturity. Maturity is the balance between courage and consideration. Maturity says, I have the courage to express my feelings, express what I need, and I also am able to consider the thoughts and feelings of others. And I can, when I'm using the principle of integrity, I can choose to allow somebody else to take precedence over myself. A friend of our family said it so beautifully uh, when he talked about what he thought maturity was, he said this, he said, I think maturity is the ability to defer gratification. I don't have to have what I want right now. So something to toss around. And we're going to explore these a little more too, but I'm just giving you an overview here. And then the third thing, the third aspect of our character that Covey says is crucial to set a base for living a win-win life is an abundance mentality. If you are taking notes, you want to write that down. You want to put stars around it. We have to have an abundance mentality. So I'm a woman of faith. I know that God's created me as a person of honor. He's given me worth just because he created me. I don't have to do anything else to earn it. He's, I'm a child of God. I'm worth, I'm worthy. I'm worthwhile. That's what I believe. That is one of my core values. Um, I also know that he created me in the midst of an abundant system. Some of you may have heard uh, the, the scripture, the saying that my father owns a cattle on a thousand hills. God is limitless. I'm a child of God. I have access to everything I need. I have everything I knew right, everything I need right now to do the next thing I need to do. That's always the case. But there is never a shortage. So here's where, as I was thinking about this idea of think win-win, this is how I've seen it show up sometimes. I mentioned it at the top of this broadcast. I've seen it show up in relationships. Anybody ever feel jealous? Anybody ever feel jealous? I see it with blended families often. A mom gets jealous of her ex-husband's new wife, doesn't want her kids to like that, like her, doesn't want the kids to like her. It's like, oh, as if somehow there was only a little pool of love, a little pie, and that if that new mom the stepmom got a piece of it, there wouldn't be enough left for the real mom. Have you ever bumped your head up against that? Have you ever felt that yourself? Competition, jealousy, so much of that is born out of our misunderstanding of just what abundance we live in. The opposite of an abundance mentality is a scarcity mentality. A scarcity mentality says this, there is a limited amount of fill in the blank. There's a limited amount of love to go around. So I've watched a mom that's close to me. I've watched a mom take away from one of her children and give to the other because she felt sorry for the other one. This one was doing good. So she doesn't need my affection. I'll give it to him over here. He needs it more. Acting as if there was a limited love pie, that there was only so much to go around. 
Think Win Win says this, there is enough love to go around for you and for me and for them. And the more love I have for you and for them, the more love there is to go around. There is no scarcity of love. There is no scarcity of love. I want to encourage you to look at your life and think about this idea of everybody winning. And I wonder, where have you been thinking somebody has to lose? Maybe you're vying for somebody's attention. You want to be the favorite. And so you strive and you struggle and you people please trying to get them to love you best. But they don't have to love you best. They can just love you. And then you win and they win. And they didn't have to take any love away from somebody else to give it to you. I'm not talking about um, intimacy. I'm not talking about um, depth of relationship. We have people in our lives that we are closer to, but that's not because we have to love them more or we aren't close to them. So we love them less. I want you to think about this. We're coming up on the holidays, coming up on the holidays. <laughs> they can be fraught with choices and opportunities to be offended and feel as if somebody doesn't love us because they didn't choose to do what we wanted them to do when we wanted them to do it. It happens. It's happened to me. I know it's happened to some of you. We've talked about it. But I'm here to tell you this. When we think win-win, there is enough love to go around. There is enough love to go around. And we do not have to vie and strive to try and get somebody to love somebody else less and love us more. That's the heart of backstabbing, you know, and, and gossiping, trying to tear somebody else down so that they lose, so that we can win, so we can look better. Oh, you guys, you didn't expect us to apply Think Win Win in this way. I can feel it, but it's true. Think Win Win says that I can love you and I can love you and you can love me and you can love me and you can love them and we can be friends. We can share joy. There's, there's no shortage of joy. There's not a scarcity mentality. There's not a scarcity of joy. I'm getting some thumbs up. It's true, isn't it? So take a look at your life. Where are you thinking instead of they can win and I can win? Where could you shift that to say, I can win and they can win? They are, wait a minute. I might have said that wrong. I'm going to say it again right this time. So sometimes we're thinking, I want to win and I want them to lose. They need to lose. I need them to suffer. <laughs> Where can we shift that to think, I want to win and I want them to win too? And we can put boundaries in place so that we don't get taken advantage of. It keeps us from getting bitter, right? When I can say, I, I want what's best for them, but I also know that what's best for them is not to be in my life all the time. I have to set up a boundary, right? Think win-win doesn't mean that anything goes. What it means is this, is that I'm a person of honor and I bring honor everywhere I go. I'm a person of maturity. And so I can balance my needs with the needs of others. And I can do that with wisdom and with integrity. I can choose to sacrifice myself when I choose to do it and I know it's appropriate. Think win-win says that I am going to use my integrity, I'm going to use my maturity to lean into an abundance mindset that says there is enough to go around for everybody. There is enough to go around for everybody. And the more we love, the more love there is. You don't have to stop loving somebody else. Take it away so that you can give it that's the win-lose approach. Many of us were raised in homes like that, where a parent meaning well would 
love you more if you performed well, right? If you were the winner. <laughs> or sometimes they loved you more when you were the loser because they felt sorry for you. Their level of awareness limited them in the way that they treated you, perhaps. And so in your family, not just on the football field or not just on the soccer field, but in your family, it was always win-lose. Somebody was the winner and somebody else was the scapegoat. And we take that upbringing and we apply it to other areas in our life. We apply it to other areas in our life. We have the opportunity to set that win-lose thinking aside. Sometimes people, they don't even care how much it costs them. They just want somebody else to lose. That's true bitterness. That is true bitterness. I think Jerry Han Ministry said it. Helping others helps you. Hurting others hurts you. Even if you think they deserve it. Win-lose says, if I'm going to win, I need you to lose. Win-win says, I can win and you can win because I know there is more than enough to go around. More than enough. Win-win says there's abundance. And when we get in the habit of recognizing that no matter what situation we are in, there is an abundance of resources available to us. There is no shortage. To be real specific about change, when I was in the postal service and they collapsed, they evaporated my district, my job went away. I had no job and I loved my job. Now, I did have, and I'm grateful, I had the promise of a position. I knew that I would continue to get a paycheck, and I am so grateful for that. I did not have to worry about our livelihood or our household. I knew that was okay, but I did not know what kind of a job I was going to do, if it was going to be a job that I was well-suited for. And I started feeling this sinking sense of desperation. I started thinking win-lose. I started getting competitive and I saw somebody who had a, a role that I wanted and I tried to outperform her. I didn't, I didn't beat her. She ended up with the job I wanted. She ended up with the job I was designed to do. I was born to do. It was my job. You guys, I deserve that job. And for a season I was sucked into win-lose. She'd won and I'd lost. Wait a second. Wait a second. It works both ways. If I'm not thinking win-win, maybe I'm thinking win-lose. I want to win and you lose. But sometimes we're thinking lose-win. I lost and they won. I'm here to tell you when change comes your way, we talk about find the beauty all the time. There can be some really tough stuff, but when we look, there's also beautiful stuff. And that's always the case, no matter what we do. And we get to choose what we focus on. And when we focus on the beauty, we get more beauty. If you are a lose-win thinker, if you are a lose-win thinker, when somebody else gets what you want, it breeds resentment. It can make you depressed. It can cause you anxiety. I had to take a step back and remind myself, there is plenty to go around. I have gifts and talents and abilities, and I have a God who has invested in me and wants me to walk that out. I cannot lose. So it doesn't matter if that other person won the job I wanted. I wasn't the loser. I can think win-win. I am never the loser. You are never the loser. So as we, we wrap this up tonight, I'm just curious, where in your life have you been thinking, win, lose, I want to win, and I need them to lose? 
Or maybe you've been thinking, they won and I lost. I didn't get it. Didn't get what I want. Win, lose, lose, win. Swap those out and start embracing win, win. How can I, as a person of honor, have relationships and situations where I can not only create win-win, but I can also look for win-win even when it's not obvious. All right, Carol says this, it so helps to understand the principle of the fruits of the spirit. All right, let's hear it. This is intriguing, I love it. She says, where love is first. It helps me to rule out the other feelings you mentioned like jealousy and strife and disunity and bitterness. The fruit adding joy, peace, gentleness, faith, long suffering, meekness, goodness, and self temperance always leads with love. And she says, These words are gold tonight. They are gold. They are gold. From the bottom of my heart, I want you to understand that you are a winner. You are a winner. And if things haven't gone your way, it is not because of other people and you don't have to blame them and you don't have to rob your victories from somebody else. A football game is a fun thing. A game of Scrabble, Scrabble, hard fought and hard won is very satisfying. But all of life is not that. The stuff of life is win-win. How can I interconnect with you so that both of our lives are made better. When we think like that, when we open ourselves to the, not just the possibility, but the reality that that is the life I'm choosing, things start to shift. Our attitudes change. We get better sleep. We have more joy. We start seeing those good things that we crave that we thought somebody else took out from under us. Nobody can steal your good from you. Nobody can steal it. If you didn't get it, it wasn't for you. That job I wanted so bad and I saw myself as the loser, she won. She won. And I lost. But that wasn't the case. She won. And I won. Because I started taking action toward what I knew I wanted to do next. I caught sight of a dream. I caught sight of a vision. And I made a choice to pursue it. And because I did that, I'm here sharing principles that I love with people all around the world. I coach people. I train businesses. I There's just so much I get to do. And all of it I get to do from my strength zone. And I get to do it on my terms, the way I know it needs to be done when I'm doing it. Nobody else tells me. I'm my own boss in that regard. And I'm a steward now of what God gave me. And I'm not putting it in anybody else's hands. I thought I was the loser, but I was the winner. Carol, I love what you said about when we lead with love, everything else, everything else comes along. The bitterness goes away. The jealousy goes away. We bring the honor. We lead with love. All of the rest falls into place. Where in your life do you need to make the shift? Where do you feel like you're the winner and you're crowing because somebody lost? Where in your life do you feel like you're the loser? And where in your life can you start creating win-win? There is enough good for everybody. God saw to it. There is no shortage of joy, no shortage of love, no shortage of compassion, no shortage of success. There is plenty to go around. There's no shortage of money, you guys. (laughs) There is no shortage. There's a couple of people who've got many, many billions of dollars. I don't need $50 billion, but I'll take a few. There's plenty out there. There is plenty. You never have to feel desperate. Desperation leads to win-lose or it leads to lose-win. Desperation says, I've got to take what you have so that I can do what I need to do. Lose-win says, you won and I give up. Win-win says, there's enough for all of us. 
Enjoy your week. God bless you for being here. Oh, Missy says this takes so much honesty and bravery. Yes, it does. It takes courage. It takes courage. It takes maturity, as Stephen Covey defines it, right? That courage to be able to express what we believe is true and what we know we need, and also to set ourselves aside with intention and with dignity to put other people's needs first, to consider our actions and the effect it has on them. All right, you guys, I am grateful for you. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving week here in the United States. We are going to be celebrating Thanksgiving uh, in just a few days. I'm grateful for you. Spend some time not just ticking off the boxes of what you're thankful about, but just allow yourself to feel that gratitude for whatever it is that you're grateful for. It is going to change your week. It'll change your life. All right. Mwah. I love you all. Take care and share this message. If it inspired you, click share, send it out to somebody, put a note on there that says, hey, this is great stuff. Uh, however it changes you, let people know so that they can also grow and we can all experience what happens when lots of people are growing and getting better at the same time. <laughs> all right. I love you for real. This time I'm saying bye. Bye.